Hi friends and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Heather and we work on crafty projects here on this channel. Uh, and you have come at just the right time because this is the year of bags. We are just starting out with the year of bags. So we're going to be making a new bag every week and sharing that with you. And I post new videos almost every Saturday. So if you're interested in coming along with this journey, Go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss any of the bags we're working on. So this isn't really a tutorial as much as what my process is in the studio of making things, tips and tricks for you, as well as just having the fun of seeing something come together from nothing. It's just, it's like watching those videos where they do the uh, lawn mowing and the before and after. So it's kind of a fun completion for you to watch. This week in the studio, we are working on the drawstring project bag from Can Do Crafts. This is a pattern, obviously you can see I gave it an A. So this is a really good pattern. I've only made one before. So here is my prototype. It's a really fun bag. It has a drawstring and a nice uh, chunky handle that you can carry it with. I made this out of uh, reinforced denim and it's got a nice big interior with some slip pockets for you to put your needles and your hooks and your scissors and all that fun stuff. I really love this one handle because uh, as you'll see a few weeks back when we made that other bag um, our handles were all getting scrunched up, but this one sits nicely even when the drawstring is closed. One thing I do want to change is she has two different styles of drawstrings in the pattern. This is the first style where it goes all the way up, but you'll see when it's closed it's just kind of eh. And she has another style where you put a line of stitching at the top so it's kind of like a ruffle. So that's the one we are going to do. We are also going to experiment with some different drawstring uh, cording that we have. And we're also going to experiment with some vinyl, some glitter vinyl, and some cork and other things that we can use for the bottom and the handles. And before we get into all that, I just wanted to talk about New Year's resolutions, kind of what I'm thinking of for this year and setting those intentions. I don't like to do New Year's resolutions like losing weight or doing more exercise because I find that I don't really commit to those. There's no real motivation for me to do those things. Um, we do have a trip coming up in July to the Olympic Peninsula. So one of my goals is to get out and move more and kind of build up, build up that uh, endurance so that I'm able to hike to waterfalls in July. So that's one of the intentions that I'm setting is, you know, finding an exercise, finding a daily moving practice that works for me, that I can incorporate into my lifestyle. And that's fun because, you know, I don't get a lot of fun out of exercising, so then I don't do it. So uh, that's one of those things that I have trouble setting New Year's resolutions because most of the time, I wind up crapping out over the resolution in January, and then I beat myself up over it, and it just seems like a waste of energy, and it's not a really loving thing to do to myself. So this year, instead of setting like some specific New Year's resolution, what I am doing is setting an intention of living a more passionate life, passion-filled life. So that can, that can look many different ways, ways I don't even know about yet, ways that I will discover this year. So I think a lot of times for a lot of us, we just get stuck in the mundane every day, day in, day out, doing what has to be done and not really doing a deep dive and finding out what we're passionate about, focusing time on that. You know, in our, at least in American society, there's that hustle, hustle culture of, doing this, doing that, you know, everything else is a waste of time. Reading a book is a waste of time. Watching TV, being on social media, like anything is just this waste of productive energy that you could be using towards something productive, you know, like doing something. Uh, but a lot of times I find that when you're just doing the mundane day in, day out, 
it just, you're slogging through life. And I found that, you know, we got to December of last year and 2022 was gone. And I don't know where it went. I mean, I felt like I was doing the same thing. Going to get up, you go to work, you come home, you do the dishes, you make dinner. Like all those things that you do and you haven't left time. Now I tend to leave a lot of time for creative pursuits in my own life, but some of those just feel like this is what I'm expected to do. I'm trying to start a bag making company. I'm supposed to crank out bags and that's it. So part of the year of bags is really trying new patterns that we haven't tried before and just getting out of that comfort zone. It's not about production, it's about exploring. It's about getting back to the roots of my passion, which is fabric. I love beautiful, beautiful fabrics. <laughs> I love picking the fabrics and the zippers and the patterns and everything. So we're going to get back to that and just kind of leaving space for me to find passion in the mundane. You know, is there some magic that I can get out of getting up in the morning, you know, going driving to work? Is, can I take little moments to really be present and centered in my daily life so that the days don't just all, you know, meld into one and all of a sudden it's December 2023. So really taking time to be present in my life. Um, <clears throat> not just, I'm such a forward thinking person. I'm always in future mode. So to just sit there, and that's one of the things with crocheting that I find is it really, you know, I'm working with my hands, I'm present with what I'm doing, and it kind of stops that, that brain from spinning out of control. But a lot of the times, I'm not really living in the present, I'm living in the future. Whether that's a week from now, planning the next vacation, planning the next video for you guys, I'm just in future mode, and I'm not really present with the day in day out of my life. So I would like to spend that time finding little moments of magic in my day and and focusing on what I'm passionate about. And it might not even be the actual doing of the making of the bags, it might just be the dreaming about the future. Like the last two weeks uh, being off work has really kind of shown me what it would be like if this was my job. Okay, so before we dive into the box here and see what we're doing, I just wanted to quickly touch on the advent yarn. So we have our bowl of advent yarn here. I have gone through and reversed them so that the first one is at the top and the last one is at the bottom so that we can work on these. Um, I did pick out some yarn that we're going to use for the Bronwyn shawl. So I'll put a picture up here of the Bronwyn shawl. This is the pattern we're going to use for the advent yarn. And then I'll put up a picture of the yarn that I found to use with it. Uh, it's called Marshmallow. And it just has those, it's kind of like a warm gray beige, but it also has some other colors running through it. So I'm hoping that that'll be a nice backdrop to let this uh, beautiful Aurora Borealis yarn shine through. So that's the plan for that. I'm determined to get the Christmas, the Christmas blanket done first. So we are frantically working on the last kit of the Christmas blanket and then I'm waiting for the border, the kit that has the borders for that before we start on the advent yarn, the, the shawl project. So we're kind of anxiously awaiting when we can start that and I'll keep you updated about that. But this week we are working on the drawstring project bag. Okay, so we've got several beautiful uh, color combinations here that we've picked out for this. This is one of my favorites that I've had for a while and haven't been able to use yet. So I'm very excited to use this. It's a very French Parisian feel with the bicycles. This combination I found recently that I really like, they're just jars of buttons, which are beautiful. And then this would be the lining and the accent. And then we have, oh, I think this one is actually gonna be the bucket bag because she has another drawstring bucket bag and that uses three different colors. So I think this one is in the wrong box. This is for the bucket bag. Set that aside. And then we have a little fabric left. Um, 
from the Tula Pink Handmade line, so I'm going to use that for this. I just love, I love this one with the sewing machines. It's very cute. <clears throat> and then we have this fun one with the cats that are knitting. I just think that's perfect for a project pack. So excited to use that one. And then we have one more of the 50s, um, the 50s cooking cooking ones. I already made a different project bag out of a similar fabric to this. So this is a different version of that in the pink. Just reminds me of my 70s childhood. And then we're gonna use this same, gonna use, I got two yards of this fabric. So we're gonna use this fabric as well on a different one with this, which looks very like, I don't know, 1930s, 40s, Pasadena, Hollywood to me. And then we've got this beautiful combination. I love these two together. <clears throat> and I think I picked out the black cork to be the bottom for that. And then I have a gray cork, I believe, that's going with this one. So those two combos really feel more like Jane Austen Bridgerton to me. And then we've got this beautiful one, very multicultural one, and then love. So, very cool. So how many is that? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's nine bags that we're gonna be able to make with this one pattern. And I don't know if we're getting through all nine bags in this week, but we will try our best to do that. So I'm very excited to get this started and work on other things with you as well. So let's get in the studio and start cutting out this fabric. No sleep, all things run dry, I'm empty. This is awkward because I know I've printed all of these pattern pieces out and taped them together before but I can't for the life of me find the pattern pieces so we're gonna do this all over again which puts me a little behind schedule because I'm hoping to have all nine of these bags cut and somewhat put together by the end of the week or else we're gonna be going the wrong direction so I'm gonna cut all these out again I should call you, see what you've been up to I've been wondering how far did you go in seven months I bet you're happy and don't think that much about me Here I am alone, how to move on without you Ironing very soothing. That doesn't mean I iron anything else. <laughs> I only iron fabric. I don't find regular ironing very soothing because you're trying to get into the collars and the and the seams and you know the arms and all the stuff. So I don't really iron anything wardrobe related, but I do like ironing just straight yards of fabric. Um, what I use when I iron is Best Press, wonderful spray, uh, Mary Ellen's. I like the Caribbean Beach scent, and it's a spray starch, so it's a very friendly spray starch. Um, I water it down, so I do half and half. I do half spray starch and half distilled water, because I'm not really trying to like heavily starch the fabric. I'm just trying to get it as flat as possible and I could just steam it with the water in the iron but I like adding the best press kind of gives it a little oomph so this is what I do with any new yard of fabric I sit and iron it with the best press and then I cut out the pieces so you'll see that in a little bit now 
Today is kind of weird because <laughs> depending on how much fabric I actually get to cutting and ironing, um, I could be standing for quite a while today. So I have I have one of those uh, mats that you put that's ergonomic that you put under your feet. So I stand on one of those while I'm doing this and I watch reruns of my favorite shows. So whether it's Gilmore Girls or West Wing or something else, Friends, you know, just something I've seen a million times that I don't have to pay attention to um, when I'm sewing. So it's whether I'm ironing or cutting fabric with my back to the TV or going in the other room to sew something, I can just have something playing in the background while I'm doing this. Now I do sometimes play music and I have a special playlist on Spotify I'll link below. Um, which is my studio playlist. It's mainly um, some of the epidemic sound music that I heard in the studio vlogs of other people while I was dreaming about making a YouTube channel. And some of it is just other songs that really are uplifting to me while I do this work. So I will link that below if you're interested in listening to it. And I know this is not the fabric to iron and talk to you during because uh, it's, a, it's a polka dot, so I know that's going to be hard. Okay, so one of the reasons why I spray and do this is for this reason. So look at this edge. See how much that just shrunk when I sprayed it? It just totally went down. And I'll zoom in here so you can see that edge. So it totally shrunk down a little bit. And um, so that's why I do this as well. These are only one, one yard pieces of fabric. So I can't really stick them in the dryer or washer and dryer and shrink them properly. Um, and they're not going to be made into garments. So it does, they don't really have to be like pre-shrunk. But I like doing this because, um, you know, the purse could get wet. It's just... I just like hedging my bets and making sure that it's a little pre-shrunk. So that's another reason I do this besides just getting all of the lines and the creases out. So I'm just kind of worried about how long I'm going to be standing. Anti-fatigue, that's it. It's called an anti-fatigue mat. I highly recommend one. They're great. I have some in the kitchen. And they're great for when you're standing there chopping vegetables or cooking something for a long time and they're great for when you're ironing or standing anywhere for a long time. Okay, so we're gonna keep ironing and cutting, ironing and cutting, and I will just save you all the time in the world. <laughs> Fast forward through that. Uh, the last pattern had a lot of different pattern pieces and some that were very similar, so you saw that I had these little markers that I attached to them. They're just like, you know, scratch pieces of paper that I made labels on, whether it's the main piece of fabric, the base, the lining, the lining accent fabric, the pocket fabric, you know, so I just made labels for all of them. And I attached them to the pieces when there's a lot of pieces. In this case, I think there's like four pieces. There's the outside main piece, the outside base piece, the lining, and then there's a slip pocket um, on the interior of the bag so there and the drawstring channel. So there's f only five pieces to this and I'm gonna know which piece is which without having to label them. So I will give you a nice little montage of my usual, you know, cutting the fabric and show you what that looks like. And then we can get to making the bags. Okay, one of the reasons why I really like printing out the pattern pieces versus just going off of the measurements when those measurements are available is for this very reason. <laughs> so I want to use this fabric for the lining, the pocket, the base, and the drawstring. And the question is, am I going to be able to do that? So that's a big question mark here. Am I going to have enough fabric to do that? So we've got this piece, which will go this direction. 
that I've got to cut out. I don't, yeah, I do need the base. Okay, so if I was able to get the base in here, I think I'm going to be okay. I need two of the drawstring channels, and I only need one of the internal pocket because the other side of the pocket is going to be the outside fabric. So, yeah, looks like we can definitely do this. You, you. I got everything I need, but not what I wanted. Cause I just wanted you. And if I could, I'd leave the city too. I don't blame you. And I should call you, see what you've been up to. I've been wondering how far did you go in seven months? I bet you're happy and don't think that much about me. Another thing I love are these uh, design boards. So this one is a 14 by 14 design board. These are Lori Holt design boards that I got from um, Fat Quarter Shop online. And I mean, you could make this yourself. It's basically a piece of foam core board with a piece of batting glued on top and then you hot glue like a piece of bias binding all the way around the edge. So it just kind of gives you a place to design like quilt blocks. I use it to lay out all of these pieces. So what I'll do is as I get each bag we're gonna lay the pieces on here and then um, I'll have a big stack at the end that I'll show you. Okay, so as suspected, this is not the week to do nine bags. Uh, so I'm going to give myself a little grace, and we are going to split this into two episodes. Um, I really should have waited for this until the three-day weekend, because I would have had a lot more time to get these done. So what I think I'm going to do is focus on the cutting, which we've been doing this week, and... Maybe I'll make one bag, I'll focus on maybe the drawstring channel because drawstring channels are not usual to patterns, so we can do that. And then I'd also like to focus on the other types of materials that you can use in projects. So, you know, we have our cotton and here we're gonna have a cotton base, but we also have, ooh, shiny, our glitter vinyl. Our glitter vinyl. So there's glitter vinyl. Kind of has like a woven back, back to it. Uh, it's thicker. It's harder to go through the machine and the needles. So you just have to be aware of that and get like the Microtex needles to work with things like that. The cork is my favorite out of these heavy duty materials. It's um, cork. It's got like a woven back as well. I just find it easier to work with. Now you can't iron on these materials, so that's part of the problem is really getting them flat. Like when, when I attach this to the base, actually the base is going to be this one that we're going to attach it to, um, <clears throat> it's going to be hard to, to get a clean edge on that, to do the top stitching. It's just a little more fiddly to work with, but I think it adds a really nice uh, touch to the bag and these are going to be our handles so we're cutting out the handles here now we're going to have to fold these like we normally do for handles in half and in half again so I'll show you how I do that um, with the marking pen and then obviously you're sewing through 
four pieces at this point. The glitter vinyl is actually a little bit more pliable, but it's getting that stitching on there, getting it to look nice. So that's one of the challenges I've had with these, but these make a nice, thick, bulky handle. So that's really what we want when it comes to this, is a nice, thick, bulky handle. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut out the bottom pieces and the handles for the last two bags, just so you can see what that looks like. And then I think what I'll do is, um, I'll focus once on using the cork or vinyl in the bag and what that looks like, and then we'll focus next week on drawstring channels and um, different cordings that you can use for your drawstring bags. So the handle's pretty easy because it's four inches wide and my ruler is four inches wide, so that's super duper easy. And then we're gonna cut it to the right length. Just gonna line it up here. And you'll see it likes to curl in on itself, so that's a challenge. Cut it to length. I wish I could save all these little pieces. I hate to throw them away. So here's our handle. Add that to the other handles. Now this is more difficult. For this one, I could just use my regular friction pen to mark on here, or any pen really. It's not going to show. It doesn't need to be a friction pen because you're not going to iron anything. It's just the handiest pen I have. Um, to mark the edges, like here, you'll see that. But with the darker cork, <laughs> I can't use the friction pen. So we are going to try and mark this out using a different pen. And <clears throat> I'm going to go this way to waste less material. So you're just going to lay this down on our nice clean edge that we have. And now we need to mark around it. Uh, you really don't want to pin this because the pin marks are going to show. So that's the great thing when we're using our sewing clips um, is that we don't have to worry about anything showing on this. I do have a, a chalk pen, so I'm going to try that. Ah, it always breaks on me. I do have a chalk roller as well we could use. Okay, that looks pretty good. Just can't push too hard or it'll break. So I know I'm late to the party, but I just started Bridgerton, actually binge watched the first two seasons of Bridgerton over the weekend, and my oh my, it's racy. Um, I watch, I follow a lot of uh, YouTubers that are historical costume makers, and they had such an issue with Bridgerton when it came out, because those costumes are not historically accurate, um, and all this stuff, and I was like, I don't know if I want to watch it. And <clears throat> the best description I got of Bridgerton was that it was like Jane Austen meets uh, Gossip Girl, if any of you watched the first, the first version of Gossip Girl, um, or the second, I guess. And I was like, oh, that's a very good description. And Lady Whistledown is kind of like Gossip Girl in the, um, in the way that she tells the gossip of the town. And it's like, okay, I can totally see that now. Um, <clears throat> so I decided to give it a try. It's very addictive and racy. Um, probably too racy for a lot of people. But very engaging storylines. Shonda Rhimes is a producer. I don't think she's a writer, but Shonda Rhimes writes very addictive things like uh, Grey's Anatomy, How to Get Away with Murder, um, and just really good at leaving cliffhangers and, you know, you're invested in the characters and you need to find out what happens and you stay up later than you should. <laughs> so that's pretty much been my week this week. Um, and I got to the end of season two and I said, wait, I thought there was a season three already. I thought I was going to start the next season. So I'll have to find out when season three comes out, but definitely addicted to that show now. 
Um, I don't know if this really saved any room from doing them the other direction, but we shall see. So we're just gonna lay out the pattern pieces cut out. I don't have very much of this cork left. I get my cork from SoSweetness.com. I'll put it down below. But there's lots of people, I think, I think my handmade space now has cork. Um, Sally Tomato, I think, has cork. So lots of places out there have that have cork fabric that you can use. And it's just a fun material to work with, especially if you need something a little more hefty because um, but sometimes for the purses, it's just better to have that heft and weight. And I can achieve the same thing with a denim fabric as well, but um, it's just nice to add a little sparkle of something, like the glitter vinyl is very sparkly. So that's good. Um, the cork just adds a little texture and oomph to a project, so that's why I like that. And then we're just going to cut out our squares with our scissors. I just use my fabric scissors with this. It's also difficult because you're working with cotton on the top and the cork on the bottom, which means you can iron the cotton. So when I finish the bag and I give it a good press to get all the wrinkles out, um, I just have to be very careful not to touch the cork or the vinyl at the bottom. So you just have to be hyper aware of what you're doing when you go to iron these. But other than that, I think they're fun to work with. Um, yeah, other than the rolling issue. And what you can do is you can put these upside down and put like a weight, like a book on them for a while. And that'll help, um, that'll help even them out. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to attach the cork now. So it's really just like anything else. We're going to put these two together. I'm going to sew with the cork side up. I believe it's been a while. <laughs> just because it doesn't glide as well as the cotton. The cotton will glide through the feed dogs a lot easier. You put it up this way. We're just going to put these together and go sew them. Like I said, you can use a Microtex needle, um, anything like that that's meant for heavier materials. And I just use those Oregon 9014 needles for everything. They're recommended for my Juki. So you can just kind of look for like a denim needle is also good for things like cork or vinyl. Vinyl can get sticky, so definitely with vinyl you're going to want to put um, the vinyl on top like this. And the, I mean this side of it doesn't get sticky, but the, the front of it, like when we're sewing the handles together and we have to do the top stitching, that's really difficult because the handle, the front, you know, the top and the bottom will be that sticky glitter vinyl. So that's a little challenging. Um, some people use wax paper or parchment paper to help it slide underneath and then you just rip off the wax paper. That's a little challenging for me. I just go nice and slow through the machine and make sure it glides. Some people have even oiled the uh, glitter vinyl, which then you got to try and get the oil off. <laughs> so that just doesn't seem like a good idea to me. Um, so basically what we're talking about is when we get to this part where we have to sew the handles, you're going to have the shiny side on this side and on the front. So when you're going through the machine, uh, this will have a tendency to stick. So you just have to be aware of that and go slowly or use the wax paper. So I'm going to sew these together and come back and we'll take a look at what that looks like. I did put the interfacing on the cotton to beef that up. And then once we sew these together and top stitch, uh, I would normally use fusible fleece for the entire length. I would cut a length for the entire um, exterior panel. 
But with this, we don't want this to get too bulky because later on we're going to have to, you know, box those corners and we don't want it to be too bulky. So um, I'll take a look at the fusible fleece. What we could also do is just cut the fusible fleece this size and iron it on. That's the other problem with the fusible fleece is we can technically iron on this side. We just have to be careful that the iron's not too hot that it comes through to the cork side. So, I can't remember what I did on the other ones. I can't remember, I'll, I'll look back through the video. I can't remember if I cut the fusible fleece for these or not. Okay, so here's the biggest tip that I've gotten for working with cork and vinyl. Now, this glitter vinyl you'll see is pretty thin. There's a vinyl out there that's a lot thicker than that. Um, and the cork isn't too thick either. But basically what you would normally want to do in this situation is fold the seam down, iron it, and do your top stitching on top of this bottom piece. But you see how it naturally rolls to the side? So we're not going to fight this. <laughs> that's that's the, biggest, the biggest tip is don't fight it. So if, if the seam wants to go this way, we're going to have it go this way. It's less bulky. We don't have to worry about top stitching over this double, double folded cork. So we are going to roll the seam this way. And it just naturally wants to go that way. So it really shouldn't be that big of a struggle. So we're going to do that. And we're going to top stitch on the top portion instead. And it's just going to be a lot cleaner and a lot flatter than if you tried to do it the other way. We're just going to make sure this is nice and tight so that when we top stitch, it's as close to that edge as possible. So that's the biggest tip I've ever gotten. Um, used to try and force it to go the other direction, and that really doesn't get you anywhere. There's nothing saying you have to do the top stitching on the base part of it. You can make this an on purpose decision to top stitch on the top part of it. And the thread I'm going to use, you'll see, will be a nice coordinating color and will stand out nicely. So you see how nice that top stitching looks. Now the only thing with this is you, since it's a different color than the fabric, you want to just be nice and slow and careful and make a nice clean line with it. But other than that, it's nice and flat and looks great. Okay, so next we're gonna do the handle that goes along with this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a mark at the halfway point because obviously we're not gonna fold it and iron it to get that halfway point like you normally would for a handle. So we're just gonna do that and we are going to fold to the line. You will leave a little bit of space. If you did it right to the line like that, then there's no room for that, you know, the second one to fold over. So we're going to do it like that. Now this is also where the tape comes in handy. Let me get the tape. I forgot about that. I forgot about the tape. So this is like super sticky. They call it leather tape. It's almost like the zipper tape. If you have any of that, you could use that. I think this is cheaper if you buy it in a big roll like this, but it's basically double-sided tape, but it's a quarter of an inch. So what you can do is put the double-sided tape just a little ways away from where your end is gonna be and not go all the way to the edge. So you don't need that all the way to the edge. Okay, so you're gonna do it like that. And I got this from the more, more we sew, or I'll, I'll put a link down below to where I get this tape. Um, it's also available on Amazon and pretty much any sewing supply place that you have would have this. Lucy. Lucy is now playing with a toy while I'm trying to talk. Okay, so we're going to fold this up, being just shy of the line, and we're going to try and be as even as we can. 
press it down into the tape. And that's it. Same on the other side. This just makes it so much easier. Otherwise, you've got to use the clips at every step. This just means clips and more clips and more clips. So see how you're just going shy of the line there? That leaves a little space for these two to turn over. Because if we were to go right to the line with both sides, you wouldn't have that room for that bulk. So that's what I'm talking about there. Okay. Now we're going to clip this together. And we're going to go sew it like any other handle with the eighth of an inch on either side. And, you know, I've never had a problem with the tape. You can try and put the tape strategically so that it doesn't wind up in your line of stitching to not gum up your needle. But I really haven't had any problems with that in the past. And I find it's just more stress for me to try and get the tape outside of where I'm going to sew. So I don't worry about it. But, you know, that is a concern if you're worried about your needle gunking up. All right, let's go sew this. Here's our sewn handle all done. And you'll see the top stitching turned out nice. Um, one of the things that can happen is that the top stitching can get a little wonky, in which case, instead of, instead of the three millimeter uh, space when you're sewing, you can increase that to four. It just gives you a little bit more room for the bulk. And I find that if you just go slow and steady, it all works out fine. The uh, glitter vinyl and like really thick vinyl might be a little different and usually I find that the cork and like this really thin glitter vinyl is fine on a regular sewing machine. Um, the Bernina that I had handled it just fine. I do have a Juki 2010 now which is a little bit more industrial. It's not an industrial Juki, it's still a home Juki machine. But I find that with the right needle, it goes through just fine. And we're going to sew in these ends, so that's okay. But it's just a nice, nice thick handle for us to use for the bag. I just find it gives a little bit more oomph to the bag. So that's another thing we could have done is just attach this to the main panel and attached it before we sewed the seam. Only problem with that is that the seam is bulkier because the fleece is in it and it wasn't really necessary for us to have the fleece in it. So I'm going to be smart. I'm going to do the, I'm going to iron it by itself once just to heat it up. And see we're just going to be careful that that metal base of the iron does not touch the cork directly. So it's a, just a little fiddlier project that way. Okay. Put this on it and see how it just goes to the seam there and that's fine it doesn't really need to go any further than that we're just bulking up the cotton well that's easier yeah if I had remembered if I had remembered that um, I didn't put the fleece on the cork last time I used the cork I would have just done this earlier but then like I said we would have had the bulkier seam but it would have been easier to attach and not be as fiddly to iron at this point if we had attached it before we sewed it to the cork so either way I like that the seam lays flatter though so I'm pretty much going to operate like that for all the pieces that have the cork or the vinyl and for the other pieces, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these two pieces together and then cut a piece of fusible fleece using the lining pattern piece because this, this whole thing will be the same size when you sew these together as the lining pattern piece. So for the rest of them that just have a fabric bottom, I'm going to cut a piece of fusible fleece using the lining pattern piece that's going to cover this whole thing because it's all going to be fabric. So we'll want the fusible fleece to bulk up the whole thing. But that's it. Okay, it's time to sew the bag together, put the inside slip pocket in there, and get this all assembled. I am so glad that I did not 
do the first drawstring channel with you guys on camera because um, I'm going to have to alter the pattern slightly. I hadn't done this ruffle edge before and where she told me to sew it makes this channel really, really tight. So I can't get the other cording in there at all. I can get I can get the twill tape and I can get this. So I'm kind of I'm kind of on the fence because these are two slightly different colors of the cording and I don't feel like the cording is the best thing for this. I feel like the twill tape is more polished, but the only two colors I have are this natural twill tape and then a navy twill tape. So this is where we get into the question of how many supplies do you want to store in your house? <laughs> As an experiment, I got these two colors. I got a big one of this because I really think the natural is the one I would use the most, but obviously I like things colorful and I would love it if the color matched either the red or the turquoise or the pink or, you know, something rather than just being this natural color. So I think with the way this is sewn, I'm going to have to go with the twill tape on this. Um, and it just seems to be the better option. And they don't tell me how long to make it either. So we'll talk more about this next week and I'll show you the three options I have. But I'm going to have to make a note in the pattern. I don't know why she had me make the line this far down. I should move this up at least a quarter of an inch. Um, I know like with the ruffle, like you would want it... See if I can even get it to ruffle like that. You know, you want like a nice chunky ruffle up here, but I think I'd have to go up a quarter of an inch just because it's really hard to get through. I got this little teeny, this little teeny safety pin that I'm using to um, wind it through right now, <laughs> and it's still, it's still pretty tight in there. So I would want a better way to do this. Okay, so I lied. <laughs> While I can get one of these through this tight little channel, I cannot get two of them through because you've got to do them the opposite direction. So this isn't going to work. Um, it's salvageable. What I'm going to do is I am going to seam rip this out, sew it up higher uh, so I can get it through. I just didn't really want to leave a mark on this channel. So... We will see what it looks like at the end. So I feel like I keep jumping in here to tell you disappointing things. <laughs> so of course the reason why she had the drawstring channel sewn down further is because you really need more height here to give the ruffle effect. So if I pull this, you can see there's barely any ruffle here to, to be pulled. So that's obviously why she had it at that height. It just means that when it's at that height, it's not it's not wide enough to fit anything through the channels. Um, I think for future, what I would do is just make this whole drawstring channel bigger by like, what was that, a quarter of an inch that I needed to fill in the room here. Unfortunately, because we've cut most of these bags and we've cut most of the drawstring channels. I'm not going to be able to do that for this group of bags. So we're just going to have kind of a, a very short, um, very short ruffle at the top. But that's okay. We will live. Uh, that's the whole reason I like to do a prototype first. Um, thing is, I had already done the prototype. I had just not done this roughly drawstring channel on the prototype so my bad I should have tried one of those first I don't think it's the end of the world it still looks cute it's just I would I liked it when it was when it had the wider top here so I will write that down for future okay folks so that's it for this week I hope you enjoyed it I talked a lot more than I normally do so let me know if you like that better than the fast forward music, but I did want to just give you um, all those tips and tricks for the cork. So here we have our finished bag, and like I talked about with the with the ruffle not sticking up as far, um, 
I did go through and recut all the drawstring pieces for the other bags, so those will be good. Uh, That's why I like to do a prototype. So this might be my prototype in the end. I do like using the twill tape for the drawstring channels. Uh, I think it just looks a lot neater. It's a lot daintier, I guess, than the cording and, or the macrame cord that I've used before. <coughs> I noticed, though, the handle looked weird to me, and then I realized, oh, I put the handle in the wrong place. The handle is supposed to go in between the drawstring channel. So like this, it's supposed to go here in between the drawstring channel. And on this one, I put it on the straightaway on the back of the bag. So, <laughs> so this might really become my bag at this point. I don't know. Uh, but it was fun to do this. Um, sorry I have to break it up into two episodes. So that's what we'll be doing next week is the rest of these bags. And since I showed me cutting out the fabric this week, we'll focus on um, putting together the bag next week and how to do the drawstring channels. So I'm glad that I did one off camera to familiar, re familiarize myself with how to do them before we did them together. So that'll be next week. I'll also share, I got the yarn in for the advent shawl. So I'll share that yarn with you next week. And I think that's it. Um, I hope you're having a good week wherever you are and enjoying life, living to the fullest, living with passion. I did start a vision board for that, for my year of living passionately. So I'll share that with you in the next episode. And you can go look at it and see if you want to make your own vision board. So we'll talk about that next week. And I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Looking forward to seeing you again next week. And thank you so much for spending time with me. I really appreciate you being here with me in the studio. So love you. Bye. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old lang syne? For old lang syne, my dear, for old lang syne. Talk a cup of kindness yet for days of old man's time.